help you? Put your hands together. What's your name? Andre Linoge. We got word that there's been a murder on the island. Old Martha Clarendon. Matthias, this is Little Tall. We have a police emergency here. Is Daddy safe? Yeah. Shut up! Did you make him do that somehow? Did you make him write that note? We couldn't kill him. <laughs> <laughs> Where could 200 people disappear to? Give me what I want, and I'll go away. Tell them. morning anyway by the feel of it snow probably pile up and clog the exhaust all right sonny you and henry on meat patrol you grab the big cuts of beef plus the turkey and chicken the best stuff's back in the freezer will still be all right today? are you kidding me let's get going darks can come early we'll uh stick with can for this trip we'll all come back later and get the potatoes and bread and vegetables and milk well kids gotta have milk hey mike you gonna tell them what the guy's name spells Move the blocks around. What good would that do? I don't know. I got Mike. That gave me a chill. Me too. But for now, we're gonna keep that chill to ourselves. We got one more night to get through. Mike, come on. Can good. Slow down. Find your husband and your little boy. But the kids? Who wants to play giant step? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Where's my mommy? I'll just peek and see if she's upstairs, shall I? Or your daddy? Yes, please, Mrs. Beals. Where's Ralphie? I just saw him. Oh, he uh, must have chased Donnie upstairs to get a donut, too. I'll send them both down. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I gotta find her, Molly. You know what it's like out there, Jack. I know she's out there. Wandering around freezing to death in a whiteout 50 yards from the building. And if you go out there, you'll be lost too. They'll hear the horn, same as in a fog at sea. You know that. I'll go spell third. Hatch said if you go oh, out there. Oh, Hatcher. Can't tell me what to do. It's my wife out there. I, just don't go past the truck. Don't go wandering, Jack. Where's Ralphie? I don't know. 
Didn't he come upstairs with you? Yeah, he was picking up with the rest of them. Wait, what are you saying? Ralphie's not down there? He's not with the others? I, I didn't see. Cats don't... You were supposed to be watching him. I didn't see. You were supposed to be watching him! Don't you yell it, huh? One more trip. Sonny, you and Henry get the bread and rolls. Everything off the shelf, okay. huh? You want to grab at least 100 pounds of potatoes? I'll get the milk. Come on, let's go. I want to get back as soon as we can. But where was Ralphie when you last saw him? Disappeared when I turned my back. There's no door in there for a guy to go out of dumb kings. Shut up, Don Beals. <sighs> what is this, Ralphie? It's a present. He gave me a present. That's why I don't think he's a bad man like on TV, because bad men don't give kids presents. Let Molly see, okay? Don't. Molly, don't. It's all right, Mom. Don't be scared. You mean you know what's inside this? You've already looked? Sure. We even had a game me and Mr. knows. He said that these are special and that I should share them because they're not only for me, they're for everyone on the island. I don't think I'd open that, Mrs. Anderson, given the dreams we all had last night and the possible nature of this, this man. No, I uh, suppose you wouldn't, Reverend. Since he's had his filthy hands on my son twice. Down there in this. Let it go. 
sunny. Why is this happening to us? You're the lay reader for the Reverend Riggins down at the Methodist Church. You always got a quote from the good book, Andy. You must have some idea why this is happening. Remember the story about Job in the Bible? Uh-huh. Well, there's part of that story that's never been written down. After the contest for Job's soul is over and God wins, Job falls to his knees and says, God, why have you done this to me? All my life I worshipped you, and yet you destroyed my livestock. You blighted my crops. You killed my wife and my children. You gave me a hundred horrible diseases, and all because you had a bet going with the devil? Well, okay. But all I want to know, Lord, is all your humble servant wants to know is why me? Job waits. And just when he's about convinced himself that God's not going to answer him, a thunderhead forms in the sky, lightning flashes, and a voice calls down. Job, I guess there's just something about you that pisses me off. Does that help you? boy put it in his pocket and took it away but I can find it because my nose is Settle down. Everyone take a seat. Mike. The kids are acting funny. Funny? What do you mean? Now I know how easy it is just to get yanked out of the world. I wish I didn't. 
but I do. Come on. Come on. Oh, it's... <laughs> I was just standing there, see? Watching the lighthouse. And then I was his. Shit's okay, honey. It's over. <laughs> I burn my fingers, see? They're red. But they're still cold. <sighs> Angie, do you want to go someplace more private? Because you can if you want to. No, this is for everyone. Everyone should hear. What happened to you, Andrew Carver? We were watching the lighthouse fall down, and then... then I was flying backwards into the snow. At first, I thought it was somebody's idea of a joke. And then I turned around, and what had me? It wasn't a man. I wore clothes like a man and had a man's face, but... There was just blackness where its eyes should have been. And when it smiled at me, when I saw its teeth, I fainted. First time in my life, I fainted. And when I came to, I was flying. I know that sounds crazy, but it's true. And ahead of us, as if it was leading us or... Or it was holding us up. There was a cane. A black cane with a, a silver wolf's head. And as fast as we flew, that cane was always right ahead of us. It was the island we saw. And the storm was over. And the sun was out. But there were cops on snowmobiles everywhere. Mainland cops and state cops and game wardens too and news people too from the local stations and the networks and they were all all of them they were looking for us but we were gone we were gone when nobody could ever find us like in the dreams yeah yeah like that and then we stopped going up and I could feel the clouds. I mean, not cold the way you'd think snow clouds would be, but, but damp, like, like wet cotton. Oh, and George saw what it meant to do. And he screamed. But that thing just opened its right arm. And ah! I was in his left. And... <laughs> and then what happened, Angie? He told me he was bringing me back. Back through time and back through the storm. He was gonna let me live so I could come back and tell you, tell everybody that we have to give him what he wants when he comes tonight. If, if we have something that this man Lenoge wants, why didn't he just take it? I don't think he can. I think we have to give it to him. The next thing I was sure of, I was stumbling around in the snow, in the whiteout, and I could hear the horn, and I thought, I thought the lighthouse must not have blown down after all, because I can hear the foghorn, and I tried to go toward it, and, and then I saw someone come out of the snow, and I, I thought it was him come to take me back up in the air, except this time he was going to let me drop. But it wasn't. It was you, Jack. It was you. Why? Why us? Maybe because he knows we can keep a secret. I brought these games. What? What's going on? Buster. Heidi. Pippa. Ralphie, you okay? Pip. 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 Pip, what's wrong, honey? 
Pip, what's wrong, honey? Honey. Pip, what's wrong, honey? What is it? What's wrong with the kids? I don't know, but... But their eyes, there's... There's nothing there. Pip, wake up. Come on, wake up! Come on, honey, wake up. All of you, wake up! Hey, look! It's got a doggy head, a silver doggy head. How cool! A doggy! Yeah, look at the doggy head. What are they looking at? Go get Mike. Right now, go get Mike! Doggy head, yeah! Why don't you see if you can get it to lay down for a while? That's a good idea. Mike! Like there's something wrong with the kids. Buster, there's something wrong with Buster. Auntie, Auntie, no, maybe you shouldn't. Auntie, Buster, Buster, what, are, what are you doing? <laughs> Melinda, what is going on? What are they looking at? Donny, stop! Stop it! I don't think Don's in any immediate danger. Or Pippa, or Ralphie, or any of them. Then they're not dead? I think he's sleeping. This isn't sleep. If they were asleep, we could wake them up. It's okay. And what is it? I don't know.
Are we going to lose the generator, do you think? Yeah. It's a miracle it's run as long as the tires with no one able to keep it dug out. The wind must have kept the exhaust pipe clear, but not shifted. In a way, that's good news. It means the storm's almost over. Main meeting hall? Yeah, sure. Mike wants that ready first. There's a couple of emergency lights in there, but that's not enough for him. I just uh, caught a little bit of the latest NWS bulletin on the shortwave. Uh, they say we might see the moon tonight. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Where's Ursula, do you know? Oh, she's downstairs with Sally and the others. Uh, sleeping the last I saw. But uh, I'm not like the kids sleeping, you know. Oh, they'll be all right. They'll wake up and be just fine. You'll see. I hope you're right, Davy. I got so. I pray you're right. Can I help? Well, you can go down to the kitchen and get the rest of the candles if you want. I'm afraid we're going to lose the generator. Respiration is normal, reflexes are normal, and if you uh, pull back an eyelid, their pupils respond to light. Oh, well, that's good. She's dreaming. They all are. Where's Robbie, Sandra? by midnight if Lenoge intends to do so. I think we can pretty much count on that. Joanna Stanhope. Glad the old bitch is dead, aren't you? I did you a favor there, didn't I? You kept a straight face, but inside you were dancing a jig. I know. I can smell it on you like musk. When this fella comes, Michael, we must give him what he wants. I've prayed on it, and this is the guidance. We'll listen to him, and then we'll decide. Okay. There is a time to be stubborn, Michael, but there is also a time to let go of the reins and look toward the greater good, hard as that may be. Pride goeth before destruction, and an haughty spirit before the fall. Book of Proverbs. Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things which are God's. Book of Matthew. Stay here, please. We've got this under control. I know you believe that, Michael, but not all of us are convinced. Come in. Come in, boys. Don't do that, Constable Anderson, unless you want to watch this woman burn her face off. Shall we watch it burn? No. Well, come in, then. 
Having a little trouble with the local witch doctor, are you? Well, here's a little something you can file away for later, always assuming, of course, that there is a later. The Reverend Bobby Riggins has a couple of nieces over in Castine. Eleven and nine they are. Cute little blondes. He likes them a lot. Quite a lot. They run and hide when they see his car pull into the drive. In fact... Let her down! Unless you want to see Mrs. Stanhope's impression of the world's biggest birthday candle, I advise you not to speak again until you're invited to. Hatch, close the door. You don't like knowing, do you? Not your brand of it, no. Perhaps you don't believe me. I believe you. But the thing of it is, you see only the bad. None of the good. By and large, Constable, the good's an illusion. Little fables folks tell themselves so they can get through their days without screaming too much. I don't believe that. I know. A good boy to the last. But I think you'll find yourself on the short end this time. Your town is full of adulterers, pedophiles, thieves, gluttons, murderers, bullies, scoundrels, and covetous morons. And I know every last one of them. Born in lust, turn to dust. Born in sin, come on in. What do you want, Lenoz? Everyone on those benches an hour from now. That will do for a start. We're going to have a little unscheduled town meeting. 9 o'clock p.m. prompt. After that, well, we'll see. See what? If I'm through with this town, or just beginning. 9 o'clock, Constable. You, Hatch, her, Reverend Bobby, Town Manager Robbie. Everyone. He's the devil! He's the devil! Don't let him near me. I'll do anything, just don't let him near me again. Mike, what are we gonna do? What can we do? Listen to whatever else it is he wants. If there's another way, I just... I don't see it. Come on, let's tell Robbie. Yeah, what about the children? I watch them. I, I don't want to be where he is. Not no. ever again. Joe, no. He said everyone. That means you too. We'll, uh... Bring the kids up, cots and all. We'll put them in the back of the meeting hall. Yeah, that'll do. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, like you, uh, I don't know what we're waiting for, but... Uh... Then why don't you sit down and wait like the rest of us, Robbie? Yeah, Robbie, sit down. I, I, I just wanted to say, Johnny, that I'm sure that we can find our way through this situation if we stick together. Like we've always stuck together on the island,
hope well. Your day off from school would make quite an English composition, wouldn't it? Your father's a thief. Over the last six years or so, he's stolen more than $14,000 from that marine supply company he works for. He gambles with it. He loses. Dad? I don't know who you are, mister. You lie. You lie. Born in vice, say it twice, eh, Davy? At least twice. Well, Johnny Harriman. The fellow who burned down the planing mill across the reach there in Machias. I never did that. Of course you did. Two years ago, right after they fired you. And Kirk helped, didn't you? After all, what are friends for? Seventy men lost their jobs, but you got your payback and that's all that matters, isn't it? Yeah, now you're dope. Look at the trouble you got us into. Shut up. You boys really ought to go see that gay fella you beat up. Jack, you'd get a kick out of that paisley eye patch he wears. Please, just stop it. Fella lives in one of those walk-ups on Canal Street behind Lisbon. I could give you the address. Maybe the three of you would like to go and take away the rest of his light. What do you say, Lucian? Want to poke out his other eye? Finish the job? Alex? Born in sin, come on in. Robbie, why did I have to die among strangers? You still haven't explained this. Why did I have to die calling for you? When... All I wanted was a kiss. Put that down. Why don't you tell these people where you were and what you were doing when I died? I think your wife would be especially interested, don't you? You shut your mouth. Sandra, don't listen to her. This is all lies. Your eyes. I'm going to eat your eyes. Right out of your head. Not to worry, folks. He'll recuperate just fine, I'm sure. In the meantime, it's kind of nice to see him cowering quietly in a corner, wouldn't you say? Oh, come on now. Tell the truth and shame the devil. So now we come to it, don't we? Let me lay things out for you. Why'd you come here? Why us? There's just something about us that pisses him off. I'm here because island folk know how to pull together for the common good when they need to. And island folk know how to keep a secret. That was true on Roanoke Island in 1587, and it's true on Little Tall in 1989. Tell us. Quit dancing around it. Tell us what you want. Your children are here with you, but they're not. It's the same for me, because part of me is with them. Look. All of them. 
And if I drop them there... They die here. You'll see it happen. They'll puff out. <sighs> like candles in the wind. Please don't hurt my Sally, mister. She's all I've got left now that Peter's gone. We will give you what you want if we have it to give. I swear we will. Won't we? What is it? Tell us. I've lived a long time. Thousands of years. But I'm not a god, nor am I one of the immortals. So, now you see me as I really am. Old and sick. Dying, in fact. By the standards of your Mayfly existence, I've longed to live yet. I'll still be walking the earth when all but the freshest and greenest among you, Davy Hopewell, perhaps, or young Don Beals, have gone to your graves. But in terms of my own existence, time has grown short. You ask me what I want. I want someone to raise and teach. Someone to whom I can pass on all that I've learned and all that I know. Someone who will carry on my work when I can no longer do it myself. I want a child. One of the eight sleeping back there. No. No. Never. It doesn't matter which one, all are just as likely in my eyes. Give me what I want, and give it freely. And I'll go away. Never. We will never give you one of our children. Never! Hey, get him! Hey, Let go of him! For God's sake, stop him! Grab him unless you wish me to drop the children, and I will, I promise Let you go. I will. My dog! Let go of me! Oh, my God. You gotta listen to him. No, we don't. Listening to him's the worst thing we can do. Keep still, Michael Anderson. Let him have his say. Molly. Molly? I don't think we have a choice, Mike. We have to listen. In a matter such as this, I cannot take. But I can punish, I assure you. I can punish. Give me one of the babies sleeping yonder to raise as my own, and I'll leave you in peace. He or she will see much and live long, long after the others sleeping there are gone. Give me what I want, and I'll go away. Refuse me, and the dreams you shared last night will come true. The children will fall from the sky, and the rest of you will walk into the ocean two by two. And when this storm ends, they will find this island as they found Roanoke Island, empty. Deserted. I'll give you half an hour. Discuss it. And then choose. Call this meeting to order. I think it's best if we deal with this matter as we would any piece of town business. After all, that's what this is, isn't it? Town business? 
Any objections to that? No. 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 Right. The item on the floor is whether or not to give to this this thing that has come among us one of our children. He says that if we give him what he wants, he'll go away and he'll kill us all, including the children, if we don't. Have I stated that fairly? All right. How say you then, little tall, will you speak to this? I don't see what choice we have if we believe he can do what he says he can do. Do you believe him? That's the first thing I ask myself. I do. I do. Roberta Coins has a good point there, though. How many of you believe Lenoge is telling the truth? That he can and will wipe out everyone on the island if we stand against him? Show of hands. Mike, it's, it's not a question of what we're going to do. Not yet. It's just a question of whether or not we... I know what the question we... is. And once we start down that road, every step of the way gets easier. I know that, too. All right. I guess we believe him. That's one issue out of the way. Now, if there is any discussion of the main question... I have something I'd like to say. That's fine. You're a, a taxpayer, sure enough. Have on. not a man. I uh, didn't vote, but I agree with that just the same. I am your constable, the man you elected to enforce your laws, and I saw what he did to Martha Clarendon, what he did to Peter Godzo, and I've seen what he's done to our children. So I understand, as well as any of you, better than some maybe the reality of what he's threatening. But folks, we, we, don't, we don't give our kids away to thugs. Do you understand that? We don't give away our children. So what's the choice then? What do we do, Mike? What can we do? We stand against him. Side by side, we use our will and tell him no. In one voice. We do what it says over the door we use to come into this place. We trust in God and in each other. And then, maybe he goes away, the way storms always do when they've blown themselves out. Render therefore unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's, book of Matthew. You said that to me yourself, Michael, not an hour ago. Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, book of Mark. Folks, if we give up a child, one of our own, how will we live with each other? Even if he lets us live. By the grace of God. We've all got something to hide, Mike. Right. Or maybe you're different. Oh, Jack. No. No, I'm not different. I, but, but this isn't like trying to live with a, a test you cheated on. Or the memory of someone you hurt when you were drunk. We are talking about a child. Do you understand that, Jack? Michael, Michael, suppose you were right about sending him away. Suppose we, we put our arms around each other and we gather our will and we come out with a big collective no. Suppose we do that and he just disappears. He goes back where he came from. You saw our children. Now, I, I, I don't know where he actually has them, but I have, I have no doubt that flying high above the earth is an accurate representation of it. They can fall. I believe that. 
All he has to do is wave that cane of his, and they fall. How are we going to live with ourselves if that happens? He could be bluffing. He's not, Michael. And you know it. You saw it. You speak as though he were going to kill the child, Michael. As though it were some kind of human sacrifice. It sounds more like an, an adoption to me. And a long life as well. If you believe him, that is. After seeing him, I actually... I guess I do. I, I, I don't... I just don't believe this. I don't believe this. Lenoge killed Martha Clarendon with his cane. He knocked the eyes right out of her head. And we are debating whether or not to give this monster a child. We might as well give away our souls. You want to know the worst thing I can think of, Michael? Suppose you're half right. Suppose we live and they die. How are we going to look at each other? How are we going to live with each other then? And how would we ever live with you? He said half an hour, people. We have 10 minutes left. We can't do this. Don't, don't you understand that? We cannot do this. Don't you see? We, we, we cannot allow. I think we've heard your side of the story, Mike. Take a seat, why don't you? Sonny! Mike, maybe you should do what he say. All right. All right. You need to think about this, folks. You need to think about this very carefully. I need to go see what's wrong. What do you say, folks? What's your pleasure? God help us. Let's give him what he wants. Let's give him what he wants and send him on his way. Even if it's Sally, better she live with a bad man than die. My God, Michael Anderson, where's your heart? They're children. We can't let him kill all eight children. Anyone else? Please. Please. Ursula. Please. Ch Jack. Robbie. All of you. Don't do this. Don't do this. Don't give in to this. This is damnation. All right, then let's restrict the vote. Let the parents vote, and the parents only. They're all residents. No! No, that's not fair. I raised her by myself. Oh, I've had plenty of help from folk on the island, including you and your wife, Mike, but mostly by myself. I shouldn't have to make a decision like this all by myself. What is a community for if it isn't supposed to help people when something terrible happens, when none of the choices look good? Couldn't have said it better myself, Lynn. For God's sakes, let's vote and have done. Call the question, Robbie. Come on. Call the question! All right, all right, fine. But you understand this. My son is not a part of this. All right? Do you understand that? My son is not a part of this obscenity. Yes, he is. We have never shirked our duty, Michael. We've taken part in all the life on this island, and we will take part in this as well. You don't mean that, Molly. You can't mean that. I do, Mike. Well, well, screw this. Screw all of you. I am taking my son and leaving. You can't leave. We're in this Damn together. Let go of me. Michael, stop it. Michael, grab him. Stop it. You're hurting me. 
That's it. Michael, Michael, calm down. Calm down. Michael. Michael. Easy, easy. All right. Okay. I'll sit. Michael. Michael, you... Get away from me. chance to think about it, you'll understand. He'll come around. It's the only thing we can do. What else is there? Die for a principle, every one of us? You have to think about it. And if it's Pitbull, the notion's up taking. <clears throat> well, then I'll tell myself that she died as an infant. That it was crib death, something we couldn't help but foresee. And I'll believe it. Melinda and I will, will both believe it. Oye, oye, oye. The question has been called. Do we or do we not give Mr. Lenoge what he wants pursuant to his promise to leave us in peace? How say you, little tall? All those in favor signify in the usual way. I'm Harry's father, and I vote yes. I'm his mother, and so do I. I vote yes. Carl and I vote yes. Yes. We have no choice. No choice. I vote yes. It's the only way. Got to. To lose one in life is better than to lose them all in death. I vote yes. Those opposed. I count all in favor save one. motion is carried. Have you reached your decision? We have. We voted in favor. Excellent. You've made the right choice. You've done a hard thing, my friends. Despite what the constable may have told you, it's also a good thing, the right thing, the only thing, really, that loving, responsible people could have done under the circumstances. These are weirding stones. They were old when the world was young and were used to decide great issues long before Atlantis sank into the African Ocean. There are seven white stones in here, and one black one. You're eager for me to be gone, I know, and I don't blame you. Will one parent of each child come forward, please? Let's finish this.
It's perfectly simple. You each draw a stone from the bag. Do not reveal your stone until all have been chosen. The child whose parent draws the black stone comes with me. To live long, see far, and know much. Mrs. Robichaud. Jill, will you start us off? Go on, honey. Do it. Mrs. Hatcher. You go first, Molly. No, you. Please. Well, my friends, so far it's gone very well. Now then, who has the courage to show first? To put fear aside and let sweet relief rush in to take its place. Come, come. Have you not heard the gods punish the faint of heart? Buster, I love you. Sandra, let's see. I can't, Robbie. I can't. I know it's Donnie. I know it's him. I've never been lucky. White. Mrs. Robichaud. Jill. I can't. I thought I could go through with it, but I can't. I'm sorry. Mr. Bright, Henry, would you favor us?
disappeared. Mama's coming, sweetheart. Mama's coming, sweetheart. Mike. No, this, this can't be. You can't have my son. I feel your grief keenly, Molly. But you agreed to the terms. I'm sorry. No, you fixed it. You fixed it somehow. I assure you that's not so. The game was, as you'd say, straight. And since I believe that long, drawn-out farewells only add to the pain... No, you can't do that! Ladies and gentlemen, residents of Little Tall, I thank you for your attention to my needs, and I now declare this meeting at an end, with the suggestion that the less you say to the outside world about our arrangement, the more happy you are apt to be. Although, of course, such matters are ultimately up to you. With that, I'll take my new protege and leave you to your thoughts. May they be happy ones. me again, any of you, any of you. Mike haven't slept together for how long? Five months. The last time was the night before the big storm. The uh, storm of the century. When you lost your son? Correct. When I lost my son. And Mike blames you for that loss. I think he's going to leave me. You're very afraid of that, aren't you? 
I think he's running out of ways to stay. Do you understand what I mean by that? Molly, tell me again what happened to Ralphie. <sighs> Why, we've been through this. I mean, what, what good would it do? He's gone. I mean, what good can that do? It was the second day we were in the town hall where we took shelter. The storm, you know, you can't believe how bad it was. You know, I was here. Yes, Lisa, you were here on the mainland. It's different on the island. Everything is different on the island. It was a mistake for any of us to go out, especially the children. We underestimated the storm. Several people wandered away and were lost. Ralphie was one of them. And she caught her found her way back, but none of the others ever did. Mike? If you got something to say, you better say it. The ferry leaves in 20 minutes, and I don't intend to miss it. Where are you going? Mike, don't. Don't leave. Would it do you any good to tell you that I haven't had a good night's sleep in, since February? Would it do you any good to tell you that maybe we might have been wrong? I've got to go, Hatch. Robbie says to tell you that uh, the constable job's yours again whenever you want it. All you have to do is ask. No, I'm done here. I've tried till I can't try anymore. Molly needs you. Have you seen the way she is now? Have you even looked? You look for me. Linda's not doing very well either. She takes a lot of tranquilizers. I think she might be hooked on him. That's too bad. But you've got your daughter at least. You may not sleep so well. But you can go into Pippa's bedroom and watch her sleep. Any night you want. Maybe he was with Bill Timmons, the gas station man. I, I'd like to think so, that he, he wasn't alone at the end. They must have lost their bearings completely and gone into the sea. They were the two who were never found. There's a great deal of this story you haven't told me, isn't there? Until you do, until you tell someone, it will just keep festering. It'll fester no matter what I do. Some wounds can never be cleaned out. I didn't understand that before, but now I do. Molly, why does your husband hate you so? What really happened to Ralphie? He wandered away. People do, you know, they get lost. That's what happened to Ralphie. He was lost in the whiteout. He was lost in the storm. Nine years ago, that was. I just gassed up my car and left on the ferry. I've never been back.
All I cared about was that I had to wear sunglasses every night when the sun went down, that every mile on the odometer was a mile further away from Little Tall. Ma got the bank accounts, the insurance, the store, the house, and the little piece of land we had in Vanceboro. I got the blazer and a peace of mind. What was left of it? I wound up here, back on the water again. Ironic, I guess, huh? But it's different, somehow, the Pacific. It doesn't have the hard glow when the days start to run down towards winter. And it doesn't have the same memories. I went back to school, got a degree in law enforcement and another one in accountancy. Thought about going after a law degree and then thought again. Started out keeping store on an island off the coast of Maine and wound up a federal marshal. How do you like that? Sometimes the island seems very far away, and I'd really know it's just a bad dream I had. Sometimes, when I wake up late at night, trying not to scream, it seems very close. And as I said way back at the beginning, I keep in touch. Linda Hatcher died in October of 1990. Local paper said it was a heart attack. There's Legazzo sent me the clipping. I don't know if there was more to it or not. 35's young for your pump to quit, but it happens. Molly and Hatch married in May of 1993. Ursula sent me that clipping too. From what I hear, they've been good for each other. I'm glad. I wish them every happiness. I mean that with all my heart. Not everyone on Little Tall's been so lucky. Jack and Angie Carver divorced about two months after Hatch and Molly got married. Jack fought for custody of Buster. He was pretty bitter, I guess, and lost. He moved off the island to Lewiston, rented a room, killed himself there one night, late in the summer of 94. He left what little he had to a fellow named Harmon Brodsky, who lost an eye in a barroom fight back in the 80s. Robbie Beals rebuilt the old fish house on the town dock and hired Kirk Freeman to work there. Kirk said Robbie's wife Sandra came down there early one morning in the spring of 1996, dressed her in a yellow slicker and red boots, and told him she wanted to go for a little row. Kirk made her put on a life preserver. He said he didn't like the way she looked. He said it was like she was dreaming with her eyes open. But what could he do? It was a mild morning, no wind, not much of a swell, and she was the boss's wife. They found the boat, but they didn't find Sandy. It was one strange thing, but they didn't know what to make of it. There were people on the island who maybe could have helped them a little there, but island folks can keep a secret. We kept our share back in 1989, and the people who live there can keep them still. This is a cash and carry world, pay as you go. Sometimes you only have to pay little. Mostly, it's a lot. Once in a while, it's all you have. That's a lesson I thought I learned nine years ago on Little Tall during the storm of the century. But I was wrong. I only started learning during the big blow. I finished just last week.
I could have written Molly and told her. I thought about it. I even prayed about it. When every choice hurts, how do you tell which one's the right one? In the end, I kept silent. Sometimes, mostly late at night when I can't sleep. I think that was wrong. But in daylight, I know better. In daylight, I know better. <laughs>